Hi everybody, welcome to Drag Racing's Golden Era and another edition of Dry Hops. My name is Randy, I'm the editor-in-chief here at Drag Racing's Golden Era. Uh, we had a real thrill this last weekend. We went out to Mesquite, Nevada with Joe Schubeck and Gigi Carlton, his wife, and went uh, took his roadster up there and uh, it was a great time uh, at the Casablanca uh, Hotel and Casino Resort, whatever it's called up there. Um, we had a great time up there. There was over 700 cars on the lot, all classic pieces of work. Um, Joe did manage to win Best in Show, $3,000 cash prize for doing that. And we would also like to take this opportunity to thank uh, Art Cam, who uh, is the gentleman who put this event on, and he did an outstanding job of organizing it, and all the volunteers and all the people on site. And I watched him running around like a madman all weekend. So, uh, Art, outstanding job, great car show. I look forward to coming back to another one. Uh, thank you for allowing us in there with our cameras to do all the things that we did. Well, what we did while we were there was, well, first of all, we hung out with Joe Schubeck, had a few cocktails, had a few stories, had a few laughs, spent a little money in the casino, did all that kind of stuff. Uh, and Joe and his wife, Gigi, are just uh, super people. I wish that all of you had the opportunity to meet him and talk with him and the stories. And uh, for those of you that don't know, um, Gigi uh, was uh, Mr. Robert Peterson's uh, girl Friday, I guess, for uh, lack of a better term. She was the do-everything person for uh, the... Uh, Hot Rod Empire and uh, Mr. Robert Peterson, and uh, she even authored a book about the Hot Rod Empire. So she knows a lot about hot rods and a lot about street rods and all the people that were involved in the sport. Now let's get on to Joe. We took the opportunity to interview him while we were out there, but first I would like to introduce Joe to those of you who don't know who he is. Uh, Joe Schubeck was a drag racer. Um, you can see uh, right here, picture right behind me, um, Joe sitting in his dragster. Uh, that picture was back in the early 60s. Uh, Goodyear representatives, I'm pointing the wrong way here, Goodyear representatives hanging around with him. Uh, Joe did a bunch of drag racing and he raced against uh, some of the top name people. One of his biggest competitors was uh, Conrad Coletta. Uh, Joe was from Ohio so he was right there in that Michigan area, uh, Detroit area, and he was right in the middle of the mix. Uh, he raced against Art Malone. Matter of fact, uh, first trip he ever had was with um, uh, Art Malone encouraging him to run top fuel and he got in Art's car because Art wanted to do testing at, of all places, my home track, Great Lakes Dragaway. So Joe's first trip in a fuel car was in Art Malone's car testing it out and he never looked back after that and he took on some of the biggest names in uh, drag racing. Uh, did a lot of winning, lost a few, had a lot of good time along the way um, and who can who can not forget, uh, I'm sorry, who can forget uh, when he flew in in a helicopter with Miss Linda Vaughn in a, I don't know, a glittery chromed out fire suit uh, for the uh, Harry Hurst Oles and uh, did a run out there at Bakersfield with that car. And Joe has done a lot. When Joe stepped away from drag racing, he went into the world of uh, specialty equipment, you know, the aftermarket, the speed equipment aftermarket. Uh, most of us know this today as SEMA. Um, Joe developed his first product at a time when it was the right place at the right time. The Lakewood Industries hydroformed uh, scatter shield bell housing to some of you. The Lakewood uh, name is still out there. Matter of fact, I work with a guy who's got uh, Lakewood bell housing on his car. So Joel sold a lot of these and, and it probably not most def not most definitely but probably um saved drag racing from being in serious trouble because there were so many injuries due to you know guys winding their engine up to 9000 rpm dumping the clutch after they've already ground uh, material off their flywheel and exploding these flywheels taking their own feet off uh, getting into the uh, stands and hurting people so joe developed this um scatter shield a uh, single piece hydroformed and the rest is history. Uh, he told me that the first year they sold so many they just couldn't keep up. If he'd have had a better production facility he could have sold twice as many and uh, the insurance companies were coming down hard on drag racing at that time and because of the introduction of this scatter shield um, things got better rapidly because 
pieces and parts of clutches and flywheels weren't going flying into the stands anymore. So it is my opinion that Joe is responsible for, partially responsible for saving drag racing and drag racing being where it is right now today. Uh, Joe also developed um, a set of traction bars, uh, yellow ones, action traction, or was it traction action? Jill, you'll have to correct me on that one. Um, but awesome traction bars. He developed those with the you know, help of G Grumpy Jenkins. And there's a long story involved with that. And if you want to hear that story, go into my archives and you'll find my uh, full-length interview with Joe Schubeck where he tells a story about sitting at a table with cocktail napkins and a pen and penning out uh, design for uh, the bright yellow traction bars. Anyway, Joe went on to do all kinds of things. Uh, he sold Lakewood Industries eventually and moved out to California and started a new company out there and did uh, all kinds of things in the world. Joe is a SEMA Hall of Famer. Uh, Joe has also received the Lifetime Achievement Award from the NHRA. So Jay's, Joe's history is very deep in the world of uh, automotive racing parts and also in the history of drag racing and development of the sport in its early days. So, I am now going to cut to what we did as an interview right at the Super Run Car Show in Mesquite, Nevada, with Joe Schubeck standing next to his beautiful Roadster with a 904 cubic inch engine in it. And yes, I did say 904 cubic inches, which Joe developed by himself, known as the Schubeck Eagle. So, without any more talk from me, let's take it to the interview. Thank you for talking to me. Hey, Randy. Thanks for coming by with this camera. I think that's great. Well, so Joe's got his Roadster here. Why don't you tell me, we've got 904 cubic inches here. Why don't you tell me how this, how did this happen? How did you end up with this engine? Well, you know, the originality of this project is not what some people believe where uh, Boyd Coddington wanted to build another Roadster for Steve Barton, who had already a collection of 20 or 30 cars like it. Uh, it goes a little deeper than that. It was it was all about a drag racing dream that I had and, and enough money at the time to do it, but it was to replace the Chrysler Hemi and its weakness in the bottom end that we used to blow apart from our blown nitro engines and, and the valve train that was always wanting to lift the superchargers off the top from the valve float and such. And I had this idea that we would build an engine a lot stronger on the bottom end and that had to be made stronger by making it longer and adding more material and such and so forth and while we were at it it seemed we could take the technology like Mercedes-Benz had with four valves per cylinder which meant real light valves and real light valve springs and dual overhead cams and, and extend the RPM range up to up and beyond the 10,000 area where we were stressing it pretty bad at 8,000 with the Chrysler Hemi. So when I got into this project and I was the funder and the idea man for what I wanted to have and I had a, a Joe Anahori who was a, a good technician and draftsman and, and I wouldn't say he was an engineer but he an engineer by osmosis. Well, anyway, we filled my living room with prints and, and so forth, and I hired a young kid. This was at the dawn of the computer, the desktop computer. So my, my young computer star, he, he took to that computing and took those sketches that we had, all pencil sketches, all over my pool table at home and all over the floor and the bar. And they were, this went on for six or eight months. And we, we got them into some pretty decent prints that somebody could build patterns from and we went right into production patterns to pour aluminum for a brand new engine block, brand new cylinder heads and brand new uh, all the things that, that had to be made special because the engine was longer. We couldn't use a crankshaft out of a Chrysler anymore or camshafts or anything. We, it was a standalone engine. The only thing that this engine could use off the shelf would be piston ring, spark plugs, and a few things like that. So we had a, an idea that this would make a good top fuel motor. 
And just as we were getting it ready and took it off the dynamometer with all of our testing, we had, a, we had an idea that there's a car company that it was based in Canada that was building a, a brand new car that they were going to introduce to the world through the auto show in Geneva, Switzerland. And in Geneva, they, they introduced this car. But before I tell you what happened there, they, they came to me and they said, we want this car to be everything to everybody, and including going down the road 200 miles an hour and, and winning races. And we wanted to go to the opera and tuxedos and, and, and have all the greatest things like that you can imagine that we have today. And they called it an SUV. And I said, what's that? And they said, an SUV is uh yeah that's what we're going to call it we're going to introduce it as an suv and and we're going to spring that on the the market when we get to geneva and that's okay <laughs> so we we did end up selling that engine for twice the money i had in it and it was a deal i couldn't refuse and but it it ended my ambitions for going drag racing in top fuel drag racing uh, category. So it went into that car and they went there and, the, and a long story short, when they came back after introducing it, the uh, market, especially in Canada and in Detroit, uh, shut down and their customers, this company's customers was Ford, Chrysler and General Motors and they shut down all their sales thinking that they were going into a depression in 1990 and they scrapped that car startup. So there I was with an engine already paid for, already bought, and they said, here's a check. It's going away money. Don't come back. Don't call us. We don't want to be hear hearing from you anymore. We're not even going to take your calls. We're done with it. We're shutting down our companies up here and we're trying to save ourselves. And I said, okay. And so there I was. What do I do with this engine now? So still in the world of building other products, like you mentioned earlier, we didn't really need a, an engine project. It was just something personally I wanted to do for top fuel racing. But we went into a new thing. We, when I say we, I got my engineer back and I said, you know what I want to do is make a statement here. I want to build the biggest, biggest engine out of this engine that we have because it's longer, we can make bigger bores, bigger bore centers. And because it's taller, we can have a bigger stroke in it. So we ended up with almost, almost a five inch stroke and almost, well, as actually a six inch stroke and a five inch bore. Wow. And it came out to uh, 4.9, I think, and it came out to 904 cubic inches. Way, way, way bigger than, <laughs> than a big Chevy 454, which was a pretty big size engine at that time and and uh, it'll be like two Chevy 454s so we, we did that and then we took a couple of these engines to the SEMA show with the words letters numbers new name I put Chewbeck on on the valve covers but I put 904 people said what is the 904 and I said cubic inch displacement oh come on <laughs> you can't be that big well yeah so Steve Barton, my friend, came along to the booth and he says, my, I like that engine. It is so big and so just so beautiful. It's enormous. Boy, I'd like to have one of those. I'd like to build a car around it and, and showcase this engine. And I says, really? What kind of car would you build? He says, I don't know. And he thought about it and he came around again to the booth and this time he brought Boyd Coddington with him and I said, saw Boyd, who is an outstanding car builder, race car, hot rod builder. And the three of us stood there and Steve says, I'd just like to build something that, like a roadster or something, that this engine in it would hang out the front and just be so enormous it would be ridiculous and beautiful. And I says, that's a good idea. <laughs> and so uh, the conversation went to the point where he says, I'd like to buy it if I can buy the number one engine. I says, this is it right here, <laughs> number one. And he says, I'll take it. And so he bought that engine, Boyd bought the, got contracted to do the car and they built this Roadster. And 
the idea was to make the most beautiful roads that they could possibly make and it didn't matter how much it cost. The best rear end, the best transmission, the best engine, the best upholstery, the best body band, the best painter. Everything was the best, best, best. And uh, three, three to four years later, the car was done. Steve had a, 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 a basement in his, in his home in Las Vegas and, and it had already 25 or 30 cars in it. And this one went down in the basement and that was his showroom for this car. And uh, he didn't show it too often because he was having, starting to have health problems and he ended up, he passed away and, uh, and the car, like everything else he had, went into his estate to be sold. And, since my name was on the engine, I thought I'd be a good candidate to go to the estate sale first. <laughs> so I did. And th that's the reason for the car was he wanted to showcase the engine. Oh. And he thought, you know, it's ridiculous. Nobody else is going to have a 904 cubic <laughs> inch engine that looks this wide and this tall and this beautiful. And I'll be the only one with this Roadster, and, and that's how it all came about. It was a car built to showcase an engine, and that's how it came about. Another project that Joe has in the works, Joe has always got a project in the works, it seems like. Yeah. Joe just got done writing autobiography, memoir, whatever you want to call yeah, it. Yeah, it's, it's a bio, it's a story of my life, but I tell you, it's not a story about my drag racing life or who won a race or how fast I went or what was the ET or speed. Uh, it's more about the people I met along the way. And I met some beautiful people, some very interesting people that I had some great relationships with. And some of them have never been told outside of me saying so in this book. And uh, there were just, just uh, uh, interesting stories that I learned about people and how they got along and how they entered into the world of high performance. and so forth. So it's not about hardcore racing. It's about people and experiences I had with great people. Well, It'll be out in the uh, 1st of 2025. And we, we should be able to find that on Amazon when it comes out. And I'm hoping on, on we Amazon. can have you come on and do a book review for us oh, and yeah. talk to us when that sure, happens. That would be great, yeah. Oh, do we have a working title for the book, Joe? We have a couple in the... Yeah, I think we do. And I think it's, it's probably going to be Hot rods, trains, and planes, and, it's, and that's we, a great we're, name. We're, we're very lucky to have the forward by Big Daddy Don Garland. Oh boy! And uh, it, it's going to be a good, a good reader. Don Don Garland is suggesting that everybody reads this because it's it's just about life, young people growing up in the world of high performance, and uh, things and lessons they will learn. And it's just going to be a really good story for everybody. I agree. With that. All right. Well, yeah. We got anything else, Kerry? All right. We want to thank gentleman Joe Schubeck, who we're we're hoping will win the number one award here. We're hoping for a number one. We'll let you know when the event gets uh, produced here who won this event, but we're shooting for him right here. So thank you, Joe. Thank you for that. <laughs>